Good afternoon and welcome to the Federal Railroad Administration's Fiscal Year 2022 Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements, CRISI, Grant Program Notice of Funding Opportunity, also known as NOFO, webinar. Before we begin, I would like to take you through the items you see on your screen. The PowerPoint presentation for the webinar appears in the top left window of your dashboard. Before the presentation begins, I'd like to go over the webinar format. We'll start with a brief welcome, introduce our speakers, and then launch into the presentation. Following the presentation portion of the webinar, we'll have a question and answer session during which FRA will address the questions that we've received in the Q&A session questions pod. And I'd now like to hand the presentation over to Deborah Cobrin. Deborah. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our FY 2022 Chrissy webinar. We're so excited uh, that you can be with us today uh, so we can speak about the program. I'm gonna do some quick introductions of our FRA team, walk through our agenda, and then hand things over so we can really get into the guts or the meat, however you'd like to think of it. Um, to make things a little easier, myself, all the way over to Ryan. So myself, Elena, Miriam, and Ryan, all work in our National Rail Planning Division. And what that means is we work on FRA's discretionary grants program. So this one, as well as the new crossings program, the Fed State Partnership Program and others. Um, we're joined by two of our excellent colleagues, uh, Michael Johnson, um, an economist who will speak about uh, best practices related to our BCAs and Amanda Murphy, our acting federal preservation officer who will speak to us about the environmental process and NEPA. So what are, we, what are we going to talk about today? We're gonna to talk about the Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements Program. And that's probably the last time we're going to say that many words at once. We fondly refer to the program as Chrissy. It's a little bit less of a mouthful, uh, but in case you're wondering what it stands for, there you go. Elena is going to provide an overview of the program. Uh, Miriam is going to provide a NOFO overview and share some information on how to apply. I will speak about best practices on the project narrative and statement of work. Michael will speak to best practices on the BCA. Amanda will speak about environmental best practices. And if that's not enough, um, we will be taking questions at the end of the presentation. And now I'm gonna hand things over to my colleague, Elena, for the program overview. Thank you, Debbie. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome. My name is Elena Gonzalez, and let's get started with the program overview. The purpose for the FY22 Chrissy Grant is to fund projects that improve the safety, efficiency, and or reliability of intercity passenger and freight rail systems. The NOFO, Notice of Funding Opportunity, for this program was published in the Federal Register on September 2nd, 2022. There is over $1.42 billion available and applications are due by 5 p.m. Eastern time on December 1st, 2022. Applications that are incomplete or received after the deadline will not be reviewed or considered for funding. There are no exceptions, so please read the NOFO carefully and follow all instructions when completing and submitting your application. Who can apply? There is a wide range of eligible applicants and most of you participating today fit into one of these categories, either directly or by contract. I wanna say a word about public agencies. If you are applying as a public agency or publicly chartered authority, please include a link to your authorizing statute in your project narrative or include as an attachment a copy of your public charter if there isn't one online. For the eligible applicants, this is a board category and we ask you to explain this in your application. It does slow down the process for everyone if we have to search for authorizing authority because the eligibility screen takes place before the application evaluations to try to make sure that the evaluations are evenly distributed um, among the evaluation panels. In the last two go rounds, it did take some extra time to track this down for a couple of the public authorities 
and county created economic development commissions. Once you apply, we know you're eager to find out if you've been selected. Please help us help you in this respect. When we look at applications, we look at two things to determine eligibility. Is the applicant eligible and is the project eligible? So let's look at the list of eligible projects. Eligible project criteria. A wide range of rail capital projects are eligible, as well as regional or corridor development plans, safety programs, and institutes in research and workforce development. There's also new items under the bill, bipartisan infrastructure law. These measures are those that prevent trespassing, preparation of emergency plans for hazardous materials that are transported by rail, to name a few. At least 25% of funds are reserved for rural projects. Set asides and non crisi funding. $150 million has been set aside for capital projects to support new intercity passenger rail service routes, including alignments for existing routes. $25 million set aside for capital and engineering solutions targeting trespassing. $2 million for deployment of maglev, which is magnetic levitation transportation projects, and $5 million for pre-construction planning activities and capital costs related to development of maglev transportation projects. Please keep in mind for the non-federal match requirements, federal share of total cost should not exceed 80%. 20% minimum no federal match for CRISI funded projects may consist of public sector and or private sector funding. FRA will not consider any federal financial assistance nor any non-federal funds already expended or encumbered towards the matching requirements unless they're compliant with 2 CFR part 200. Applicants must identify the sources of its matching and other funds, and applicants must clearly and distinctly reflect these funds as part of the total project cost. In-kind contributions, including donation of services, materials, and equipment may be credited as a project cost in a uniform manner, consistent with 2 CFR 200.306. Here's a general overview of the evaluation and selection criteria. The NOFO states that applicants need to address how their project addresses the evaluation and selection criteria. For the evaluation criteria, evaluators are going through each application and searching for how the application addresses each of these, technical merit and project benefits. These are statutorily required and it is what we're looking for when we go through the applications. If applicants do not pay attention to these criteria, it could negatively impact the rating of the grant application. At FRA, we have a wide range of technical experts and subject matter experts, SMEs, on our evaluations teams, safety experts, civil engineers, environmental specialists, and economists as well to review each application. For the selection criteria, the administrator is the person who selects the projects with input from a senior review team, SRT. Evaluators present ratings based on both the evaluation criteria and the selection criteria. The NOFO outlines the statutory and administrative selection preferences and the key departmental objectives. Applicants who can hit all of these areas tend to be the most successful. A successful application describes how the project will address a number of the selection preferences and key departmental objectives. Just stating that your project meets these criteria without concrete examples usually means that the project receives a low evaluation rating. It is difficult to overcome having all the letters of support in the world if an applicant is not describing the public benefits of their project. Public funds are for public benefit. Tell us what they are. The departmental goals include safety, safety uh, equitable economic strength and improving core assets, equity and barriers to opportunity, climate change and sustainability, 
and transformation, transformation of our nation's transportation infrastructure. For program reference, preference, federal share of total project costs is 50% or less, maximize net benefits and projects targeting trespassing in areas with documented casualties. FRA Buy America includes new requirements enacted by the BABA Act, which is the Build America Buy America, for FRA funded projects to steal iron construction materials and manufacture goods used in the project must be produced in the United States. FRA Buy America applies to materials purchased with FRA funds and with non-federal funds. Consider FRA Buy America requirements in project planning, design, and budget. Include FRA Buy America requirements in all procurement documents and obtain any, necess any necessary certifications to document compliant. Waivers are granted only in limited circumstances and can result in significant delay. On the left side, you will see links for the Buy America and component list. Next, I will turn it over to Mariam to cover the NOFO co overview and how to apply. Thanks, Elena. Hello, everyone. My name is Mariam Ohamu, and I will be presenting the next uh, section on uh, the NOFO overview and how to apply under this program. Okay, so first things first, what is a NOFO? As Elena mentioned um, in her section, a NOFO stands for Notice of Funding Opportunity. It does two primary things. It announces the grant opportunity and it contains details about the application requirements and procedures to request federal funding for eligible projects. The NOFO um, contains um, these uh, several parts, all of which are listed here, um, including a program summary, key dates, um, required documents, addresses, uh, FRA contact information, um, and all of these other points that you can uh, read on this slide. So you might be asking, where do I start? To find information about FRA's grant programs, particularly the Chrissy Grant Program, please refer to FRA's Discretionary Grant Programs webpage. And the link for that is, um, is here and included in the web links pod. On that page, you can link to some summary information about Chrissy, and you will also see a link to the NOFO that announces the grant opportunity in the Federal Register. This next slide shows the Federal Register um, uh, listing. Um, the Chrissy NOFO can be found uh, in the Federal Register under listing number 20.325. It was published uh, on September 2nd, 2022, um, and the application deadline is 5 p.m. Eastern Time on December 1st, 2022. Uh, please make sure to read the NOFO in its entirety before beginning your application. And as Elena mentioned, uh, there will be no exceptions for late submissions. You will need to access grants.gov to read directions on applying electronically and finding other important information. On grants.gov, search for the Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements Program information by using CFDA number 20.325 to go directly to the opportunity to the opportunity. Otherwise, you can search for all FRA grants and choose from the list. Click on the opportunity number to see a synopsis of the grant program. And again, this is highlighted on this slide, um, and I believe included in the web links pod as well. The synopsis on grants.gov provides summary information about the grant opportunity. You can also start your application in grants.gov on this page. As a heads up 
For those who may wish to submit their applications early, Grants.gov will be experiencing downtime between September 23rd um, and September 29th. So just a heads up so you can plan accordingly. Okay, so now how do you how do I apply? After reading the NOFO and determining that you're ready to apply, you must first verify that you're registered with a valid unique entity identifier or UEI, um, aka entity ID. This number replaces the DUNS, which was retired uh, in April 2022. The UEI is a new non proprietary identifier that is provided by the System for Award Management, SAM.gov. To find or request a UEI, please visit www.sam.gov. Then register in the federal government's System for Award Management, SAM. Entities registering in SAM must submit a notarized letter appointing their authorized entity administrator. The SAM registration may take two or more weeks, and you, you must have a UEI uh, and be registered in SAM prior to applying for this grant. Um, please keep that uh, registration timeline in mind and plan your application submission accordingly. Okay, so what do I include in my application? As you prepare your application, be sure to focus on the required documents listed in the NOFO um, and also uh, reiterated here. Um, especially important is the project narrative and statement of work. Um, other important documents listed in the NOFO include uh, NEPA documentation, um, and a draft use uh, slash ownership agreement if applicable. This is also known as the 22905 requirement. Um, also, as a note, um, the benefit, uh, benefit cost analysis is required for this program. Um, so please make sure to include that. Um, also, as a helpful tip, um, please, uh, make sure to uh, upload the required documents as separate files uh, and don't forget to label them accordingly. So if something is the project narrative, label it project narrative. If something is the um, BCA, label it BCA. That will make it easier for uh, the intake and eligibility reviewers to find uh, the appropriate documentation. These are some additional required forms, um, budget information for construction or non-construction projects, um, and then assurances and certifications, um, financial capability questionnaire, and uh, lobbying uh, activity disclosure. Again, these are listed in the NOFO also. The synopsis on grants.gov provides summary in information about the opportunity, as I mentioned. You can also start your application on this page and access the grants.gov customer service function should you need it. It is highlighted at the bottom of this slide. And now just to walk you through the, um, the overall application review and selection process. Um, the first, state, first step uh, once the, um, once the uh, felicitation closes is intake and eligibility review. Each application is reviewed for completeness and eligibility to, de to determine uh, which applications move to the evaluation stage. Complete and eligible applications are then evaluated by a team of DOT subject matter experts uh, using criteria outlined in the NOFO. 
final funding decisions are made by taking into account the evaluation and selection criteria outlined in the NOFO. Um, that's step three, selection. And finally, um, FRA, uh, an FRA press release will announce the selections approximately four to five months following the application due date. Um, just as a heads up, um, after selections are announced, FRA will contact uh, the selected recipients to begin the pre-award initiation process. So if you are selected, you can expect to hear uh, from an FRA staff member to initiate uh, the process. And um, to understand more uh, and get a bigger picture of the grant application process from NOFO announcement to grant obligation, please visit FRA's Competitive Grants Application Process webpage. Um, that webpage features a helpful pop-out flowchart that illustrates the application process steps, which you might find helpful. And that concludes my section. Now I'll turn it over to Deb to cover best practices. Thanks, Miriam. So we're going to go over some best practices, starting with the NOFO. As it was mentioned earlier, it's really important to read the NOFO to understand the information that should be in your application. However you read best, sometimes for me, it's shutting down email and chat clients. Sometimes it's maybe it's a little old fashioned printing it out, grabbing a highlighter, moving as far away from my computer as I can um, to really focus on the text on the page. That is what we would recommend. The NOFO is really, it's your guide map. It's the best. So the best thing, if there's one key takeaway, it's really read through the NOFO. Uh, but there's definitely a few areas we've noticed um, where we find some shortcomings, including in the project narrative, the statement of work, the BCA and the environmental documentation, and we're gonna focus on those. So for the project narrative, um, let's take a look at that. This is really the heart of your application that subject matter experts review when evaluating your project. Uh, in the NOFO, we provide an outline for your narrative, and it's important to include all of those elements um, that are in the outline in, in your application. And I will note there is a 25 page limit uh, and so please be sure to keep it in that space. The, the cover page, it's important to state, um, it's really important to us when that cover page is filled out. It, it includes a snapshot of a lot of information that's helpful to us at a glance and should be in your application. And, and please note if uh, this application you're submitting for Chrissy has been submitted to another federal grant program, be it an FRA or a DOT program or other government program, or if the project has already received funding from other federal sources. The project summary. This is a place to really be brief and quick about it. This is, this is a quick summary, four to six sentences, where you should Ask yourself the journalistic questions of who, what, where, when, and why, and really highlight the benefit of the project. Uh, it's sort of our elevator pitch. And if you want a sense of what we think that short summary should look like, take a look at our past, pre past press releases um, for grant selections, perhaps the FY21, last year's Chrissy selection announcement, to get an idea of the top level information that we like to see in a project summary. In terms of project funding, we'd like to see detailed information about where your non-federal match is coming from. That includes information on the sources, details on an in-kind match, funding commitment letters, and let us know if there's any time constraints, either if the funding must be spent by a certain time or if the funding will not be available until a certain date. I'm now going to skip four and five as applicant and project eligibility was already covered. And so we're looking at the detailed project description. This is where you get to hone in on your project and really quantify wherever possible with numbers. Um, so use numbers where you can, 
um, to support qualitative statements like the volume of traffic or trip time savings and highlight the benefit and costs even if they're already included in the BCA portion. This is a place to include photos and diagrams to support the information. Um, and if your application is for work on a railroad where you are not the host, um, go ahead. This is a great place to identify the host railroads in your agreements with them. The project location. This is just identifying and telling us the cities and counties and states where it's located. Be sure to include a map that shows the project. Um, we know Google Maps is easy to use, but other publicly available uh, map tools are also helpful as well. And if your project includes grade crossings, um, please include that information as well as the geospatial information. And it's okay if you need to add some elements to a publicly available map to show where your project is, go ahead and do so. The map is really just for us to see where it is. It's also great when you can have a separate section in the project narrative focused on the evaluation and selection criteria. And this is how the project meets those evaluation and selection criteria. Here's where you get to write your own evaluation. Um, we wouldn't recommend you rely on the detailed project, project description to satisfy this requirement. It's okay to repeat key points. The goal here is, frankly, this is the place, if you know you're meeting those pieces, this is where you get to sell it. We also want you to tell us about safety benefits. So where possible, please include safety justifications for the project. It's also important to include project implementation and management information. This is where we want you to highlight your past performances um, and in management overseeing similar projects, including FRA or other DOT funded projects. This is also the place to describe expected arrangements for project contracting, contract oversight, change order management, risk management, and federal requirements uh, for progress reporting. And last year, but most certainly not least, um, is the environmental readiness. Um, and this, this piece is gonna depend on where your project is um, in the environmental process. If NEPA has been completed, we'd love it if you could provide a copy of the document or even better, a link to where we can find it. If the NEPA has not been started, provide a detailed project description and description of the setting and land use with visuals where possible. And if NEPA is underway, give us a sense of the status, the expected completion date and document type. Uh, it's also valuable to note here that an EA or an EIS can take several months or years. Um, and it is possible depending on the project that grantees would need to hire a consultant or someone with NEPA expertise to assist. And for final design and construction applications, please include uh, the necessary permits and approvals or the status of those, the completion date, and whatever you can share to give us a sense of where you are. Moving on to the statement of work. Um, here's where we want you to be logical. Organize, organize what you're trying to do into tasks that can be associated with elements of the budget. Think about the deliverables and how you would communicate that status and how it would be good to share that with FRA. This should be your draft for what specifically you would do with the funds that you're asking for. So keep the statement of work to just those items that this grant would buy. If your grant, if, let's say this grant is for phase one of a three phase project, go ahead and just stay focused on phase one here. After our goal with the statement of work, something for you to think about as reviewers look at your application. After reading the statement of work, even a relatively novice person should have a solid understanding of what the project is, what the key tasks are, how much it will cost, and how long it should take. We understand that statements of work are often updated following selection and as the project moves into the awards phase. So provide the best information you know now, but we'll work with you if needed post-selection. And again, we have on our website a number of templates for the statement of work. We'd encourage you to go ahead um, and look at those and use them because they provide a, for everything I just mentioned for the statement of work, it should go ahead and be in those templates. And now I will hand things over to my colleague, Michael, for BCA best practices. Thanks, Deborah. Um, so this is gonna be a high level overview of what cost analysis is or BCA. 
and how it's related to the grant application process uh, for any of those who are unfamiliar. If you've gone through this process before, not much has changed. For more in-depth details, we have extensive BCA guidance updated with 2022 alterations on the DOT website, which will be linked at the end of the presentation with specific examples, figures, um, and updated calculations. So we want to look at your project's costs when you're doing um, the analysis, both against the projected benefits uh, for the project um, and the case should the project not occur. So you need to detail your base case, alternate case, and benefit timeline. Your alternate case should have specific monetized effects supported by assumptions, data, and calculations, which result in the benefits of the project to the public. The smaller and more specific the effect, the better, as long as it can be supported. Again, look to DOT BCA guidance for details. Properly discounting benefits to the base year is essential. So this, um, so all this, above was for track two and three, but for projects um, under track one and four, the BCA should be um, quantified um, if possible, but at the very least, uh, you should provide a qualitative description of them. So we went over this briefly on the last slide. Uh, the base case, some sometimes called the no build scenario, is the estimation um, of the world should your project not occur. Um, this could entail a bridge failure, lengthy rerouting, environmental damages, etc. Now, the alternate case or the build scenario, the case in which your project does occur, which is what you're arguing for and, and the benefits you're calculating up, is the world in which your project is actually implement, implemented. Um, it's important here that your BCA should pr just present analysis for a single project. We often see projects that are under an overarching program of many projects and BCAs for that whole effort. Only your project and its direct costs slash benefits should be analyzed and presented by you in this application. Timeline should be uh, straightforward here. How many years of your benefits will accrue to society? I believe the limitation is 30 years um, uh, per DOT guidance. Again, proper discounting of values is important to fully understand the value of the project and its benefit in the presence. Um, in the present. So look to the BCA guidance again for more on the technical aspects of how to discount properly. <clears throat> so uh, scope of the analysis, as I mentioned in the last slide, uh, the BCA is accounting for differences between the base and the alternative case. The negative aspects of the world in which your project doesn't occur is a way to uh, calculate benefits um, or costs, I, sh I should say. Um, and the transportation and other benefits of your project um, will leave in its wake should it occur. We have examples here below. Inner city passengers will likely change modes if their station is unavailable. Um, a few more here. The slide will be available afterwards, but those are technical examples here um, relative to certain types of projects. So at times your project may have negative financial consequences on society. Account for these with a negative dollar figure. A project could create a situation slightly negative, um, such as impacting traffic in one area, but overall improving movement in a way that outweighs this setback, which you can argue um, in your calculations and your BCA narrative. Make sure your benefits and costs are in the right place. Um, operation and maintenance are a cost. Reduced operating and maintenance costs are benefits. Um, the residual value of infrastructure is technically a benefit. Um, there's further examples and details in the guidance, which again will be linked at the end of this presentation. So BCA development. Um, we've covered the need for detail and calculation. I just want to reiterate that it's important to provide sourcing and documentation for any data, inputs, value, growth rates, etc., especially if it comes from non-DOT guidance sources. Um, we have some examples of bridge failures and what um, the resulting ramifications may be, the negative scenarios which could take place, which your project is preventing from occurring um, should you be funded. So modal diversion is a frequent outcome of Chrissy projects, which is essentially you are creating a rail project that takes cars off the road or prevents rerouting um, or switching to trucks. Um, 
things of that nature. But its impact can be difficult to calculate correctly. Uh, again, see this BCA guidance for info on induced demand, marginal benefits, et cetera. But there are some, some examples of allowable results of modal diversion. Um, here below, uh, increased pavement bridge damage, for example, increased harmful emissions, increased congestion on highways, decreased safety. It is important to understand what is a transfer of value within a society versus benefits to society overall. Again, the guidance has details um, on the actual technical uh, descriptions of these. So here are some good tips and summaries for what we discussed. Feel free to ask further questions at the end of the session. Um, extra tip, a personal tip, um, to aid reviewers in assessing and locating your calcul calculations, it is advisable to have a summary sheet within your BCA spreadsheets to display a table of contents as to what is in the sheet, the location of certain calculations, benefit categories, uh, et cetera. Um, like Deborah said, you're trying to sell us on um, the benefits to society slash the public and clarity goes a long way in us deducing what the benefits are. Um, so here are the links for the D BCA guidance and rail specific FAQs. Um, one last thing I wanted to address and stress um, in the new Chrissy NOFO for 2022 that just went out in section C, strategic goal B2, section C, strategic goal B2, there's been a new addition uh, this year for selection criteria, and that is how your projects will um, support resilient supply chains and uh, economic opportunity. While a qualitative discussion of how your project contributes um, to improve supply chain operations, finding a way to quantify the associated benefits to fluidity, avoided congestion, transportation, reliability, et cetera, goes a long way in communicating the degree of impact your project has um, on supply chain and uh, our transportation system and goods movement flow. Given that supply chain operations have become an important issue in recent years, uh, I just wanted to hone in on that addition in a NOFO and encourage you to consider how your project contributes to the goal of creating a more robust and resilient supply chain. Um, so again, here are the two links, there's specific FRI BCA guidance and then the general DOT BCA guidance, um, both available here. And that is all I have for now. Moving on to Amanda Murphy, who will be discussing the environmental aspects um, of the project application process. Amanda. Hello, everyone. Um, um, again, my name is Amanda Murphy, and I'm the Acting Federal Preservation Officer here at FRA. Um, I'll be describing what information you should include in your application regarding your project's environmental readiness. Environmental review is required for all FRA grant funded projects. FRA, uh, environmental review includes requirements under the National Environmental Policy Act, which is known as NEPA for short, and also includes requirements of other federal environmental laws, regulations, and executive orders, such as Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, Um, section 4F of the USDOT Act, and Section 7 of the Endangered Species Act. It is important to remember that FRA reviewers cannot contact you to ask or clarify or provide additional information when reviewing your application. Our determination of environmental readiness is based only on the information you provide within the application, so it is better to err on the side of providing more information. If you already have an approved NEPA document for your project, whether from FRA or another federal agency, please include that in your grant application. If there is no previous NEPA documentation, that's fine, but it is very helpful for you to consider the project's potential impacts to resources in the human and natural environment and provide information about them in your application. The more information you provide on potential environmental impacts, the better. It will help you do it during your grant review app and will later help you if your project is selected because it will give you a good start on FRA's effort at NEPA review. Possible information to include are things like temporary and permanent impacts associated with historic properties, noise and vibration, wetlands, air, protected species, and floodplains. 
also consider what environmental permits and consultations might be needed. There are different types of NEPA documentation depending on your project's potential to have significant environmental impacts. Um, the most complex projects will require an environmental impact statement or an EIS. Um, other projects will include environmental assessments and um, our lowest level of NEPA documentation required is a categorical exclusion. FRA environmental protection specialists are available to assist you in determining the appropriate type of NEPA documentation for your project. We also have information available on our website about this. The website also has webinars, trainings, and other resources about the environmental review process that you might find helpful when preparing um, your application. Now back to Elena. Thank you, Amanda. Hi, this is Elena again. So let's recap and provide reminders for the FY22 Chrissy NOFO. This is a very important one. Always read the NOFO carefully. Determine what a successful project will look like. Use the application requirements checklist in the NOFO section D part two as you complete your application. Address all of the evaluation and selection criteria on which you will be rated by clearly and directly responding to the criteria. Your application will be easier to read and evaluate. Don't bury key points. Verify that all budget figures match corresponding figures cited in different parts of your application package. Name key partners, indicate in-place agreements, and include letters of support. Some of these seem like statements of the obvious, but we highlight them because there's a limited time to draft the applications and we want to make sure you're building in time to do the quality control work. Make sure your numbers on your forms match your project narrative and statement of work, SOWs. Name the key partners and include those letters of support and financial agreements. If and when possible, name each section so that we all together can identify what you're discussing in your application. For example, for a statement of work, <coughs> SOW portion, you can label the file document, SOW, and so on. Submit spreadsheets formatted in Excel, not in another format, such as PDFs or Word document. And last bit of advice, have a cold reader review your application, and please do not wait until 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, December 1st, to submit your application. We want you to have a successful submission. Grants life cycle. Here you will see how a grant starts from pre-obligation, which includes the grant agreement or NGA, notice of grant agreement, to a grant being obligated, post-obligation, up to where the POP or period of performance ends and onto a successful grant closeout where the grant is closed. We can definitely discuss the grant life cycle again when the time comes. We're all rooting for you. That looks like about all the time we have today for the questions. We really appreciate everybody's participation. Deborah, did you have anything that you wanted to wrap before we close out? I just wanted to thank everyone for attending today and for your interest in the program. It's really great as folks who spend lots of time, you know, writing and preparing to see this level of interest. Uh, you heard from a number of folks on our team today, including Elena, Miriam, and Ryan, as well as Michael um, for the BCA and Amanda on the environmental and NEPA process. We're available to answer um, questions as they come up in the next few months, our contact information you have both on the slide as well as in the contact box. Um, and we just really wanna thank you for your interest. We look forward to speaking with you and we look forward to reading your applications later this fall. Thanks, Deborah. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. Today's webinar, again, will be available on FRA's website in the next week. The PowerPoint presentation will be available in 24 hours. Uh, the webinar will end in 20 seconds. Please copy or screenshot the contact information on the screen or the contact information in the contacts pod.
Again, thank you all for joining us today for the fiscal year 2022 Consolidated Rail Infrastructure and Safety Improvements Grant Program Notice a Funding Opportunity Webinar. Again, thank you so much for joining us. This webinar has ended and we hope you have a great day.